Because I have here a vector set up, and I've put some values into it, and I've um, called a little function that I wrote called show vector that just shows you a picture of what the vector looked like. So just before we start looking at new functions, let's see what this vector looks like um, for a second. So in there I've got 10, 20, 30. Okay. So um, the first new function I want to show you is called pushback. And so here, let's call it, and it takes as parameter um, a value that I'd like to add into the, the vector. Um, so I'm going to push back 40, and just so you can see where that gets added, let's call show vector again and send it the list, um, and let's see what happens. Okay, so here's my original list. It has 10, 20, and 30. Here's my list after I called pushback it has 10, 20, 30, 40. So pushback has the effect of adding a new value onto the end of the vector. Now, you may say to yourself, isn't that exactly the same as doing this? And the answer is yes. So pushback um, sort of brings down to one tiny step what you can accomplish with a resize. Um, the resize kind of requires like two steps to it. You're grabbing the current size, adding one, and then specifying what the new value is. Um, but this is sort of just a little shortcut um, to add something onto the end of the vector. Uh, there's an, another function called popback. This guy doesn't take any parameters. And let's see what it does to the vector. Okay, so I had 10, 20, 30, I called pop back, and now I have 10 and 20. So pop back removes the last item off the end of the vector. And again, you might say to yourself, isn't this the same as this? Um, and yes, they both accomplish the same thing, except I have less to write, basically, if I use pop back. Um, now let's do a little test. Can I print out what got popped off the back of this vector? And the answer is no. So see how Cout's complaining. Um, so pop back removes a thing, but it doesn't like give it to me. It doesn't hand it to me as an element. So perhaps I would want to have that thing before I removed it. There's another function. Uh, let's we're gonna save what was in there. It's just the word back. And so I can grab what was in the back before I pop it off, and then I can print it out. Or let's see, let's call this removed item. And let's see, make sure we got it. Let's see if that worked. All right, so here's my original list. Here's my, I popped back after I called back and stored the value. Here's what's in my vector. And there's that item that got removed. So I can grab it before it gets removed very quickly and do something with it. And then um, related, not really, it's because pop back and push back are all working on the end, but I can ask for what is at the um, beginning of the vector. And so I could just be like equals v dot uh, front. And that will peak. Oh, I got a list. That will peak at what the first element is. Um, let's just see if it gets it right. Yeah, so 10, 20, 30, my first item is 10. Now you might say to yourself, isn't that the same as writing this? Yeah, it is. And in fact, back is the same as writing this, right? List size minus one. Um, it just sort of gives me some little shorthand versions with which I can access elements. And the real reason for their existence is that there's this thing called a stack, and we've talked about it before when we were tracing recursive problems. The idea of a stack is um, a list where you really only operate on one end of it. So if you can imagine, um, probably the best analogy for this is uh, if you're playing cards and you keep setting cards down on top of a pile, you're never working at the bottom. You're always adding on to the top. So if I'm playing cards and I have a new card to add, I would set it down on the table and now that's on the bottom and we consider the index zero the bottom. 
Um, so if we have another card to place down on the table, we wouldn't slide that underneath, we would put that on top, and so that guy would be at index one, and another card would be at index two. Oops, I should name number these differently, but that's okay. Um, you get the idea. So they're stacking up on top of each other. Now if suddenly I needed to use that and draw off of it, I would also remove them from the top because that would be the natural place to physically pick them up from. So if I am representing something where I'm only working from one side um, and I'm thinking that as a stack, um, that means the first item I put in is actually the last item I pull out, right? Because this card one is stuck down under the bottom of all the rest of the pile. Um, that would make sense to use push back and pop back because when I put an item on the stack that's called pushing and when I take an item off the top of the stack that's called popping, um, that's the origin of those function names. Okay. Um, I have just one more little thing to show you, which is um, you may miss the ability with arrays, we could list out the values ahead of time and not have to load them one at a time into the vector. So there's a little cheat we can do where we essentially um, basically make an array with our starting values because that lets us do this. So I can make an array that has my friend's names in it. And um, I can't do this with a vector straight out, but what I can do is sort of make this array and then have it be assigned into my vector. So let's make a vector. This hill strings, we'll call it my friends. The names have to be different. So this guy I create with no size. And then if I would like to take this array, which is now preloaded with these values, and shove it into my vector, there's a command for that, and it's the word assigned. And it takes two parameters. The first is the name of the array. And then this is a little bit weird, but it's the name of the array again, plus how many total elements I already have in there, um, or how many from it that I want to load. So I have three people in my list of friends, so I'll put a plus three there. Um, and now, if I take a look and show the vector, it should show me that all those names are now inside my vector. Let's verify that that's true. Yes, so I have all my friends' names now loaded. So if you have a list and you know what it is up front and you want to preload, this is a little workaround that lets you um, preload an array and then um, place those values into a vector so you can make um, take advantage of the vectors functions and everything like that.